Hey everybody, welcome back to Ryan Makes Sense, where we talk about personal finance, investing, and chart analysis. Today, I want to talk to you guys about Chalice Brands, formerly known as Chalice Farms, formerly known as Golden Leaf Holdings. Now, this company has had a very hard fall from grace. You can look at um, the most recent stock price and find that it is at one penny. If you look back over the past several years, you will see that the stock is down about 99.9%. Um, so this video is solely based around, can Jeff Yap, the current CEO of Chalice Brands, save the company? I share my opinions at the very end, and I also want to let you know that I have found some new uh, updated information on Chalice Farms. Uh, if you go towards the end of the video, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about, which um, definitely skews my perception um, positively. And I think it will skew yours as well, based off of uh, the new video that I found and content for Chalice Brands. Um, so I want to talk to you today about um, Jeff Yap. So can Jeff Yap save Chalice Brands? We don't know. Let's take a look at his professional history. Let's take a little bit of a deeper look at uh, Jeff Yap. Let's um, peel back the curtain a little bit. Um, let's also look back at some Chalice Brands um, news releases, PRs. Um, I did have to do quite a bit of digging to uh, find a presentation where they had their crawl, walk, run, which they no longer have uh, publicly on their sites. Um, so I was able to scrounge that together. So we'll take a look at that. And we'll also talk about William Simpson uh, joining the company again on the board. And um, I think that's it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and look at Jeff Yap. <laughs> I got you guys. I bet you guys thought that was Jeff Yap's real picture. Um, surprise, it was not. So this is Jeff Yap, the CEO, President, Strategic Partner, Microsoft Corporation at Microsoft. Um, fun fact, Jeff Yap does not work for Microsoft. Um, so let's take a look at Jeff Yap's um, current experience. So uh, just at the very high level, we can see Jeff Yap has not updated his LinkedIn to show his most recent um, experience as CEO for Chalice Brands. Um, why did he leave it off? I don't know, maybe it's strategic. Maybe he doesn't wanna promote a cannabis company on LinkedIn, who knows? There could be a, so many reasons. Um, but aside from that, we also, well, I, I, I guess I won't assume, let's just go down his experience. So it looks like Jeff Yap was the CEO and strategic partner of Microsoft Corporation from 2011 to present. Um, I don't think he is presently working at Microsoft. So um, let's just say 2019. Um, next, we have founder and CEO, global e-commerce, multi-channel marketing and retail and entertainment technology. What's next? Um, so Jeff Yap is currently the founder and CEO, but let's actually um, just... I wish I had this prepared, but let's just see um, what what's next is. It is, um, you might have noticed, but I did not spell what's correctly. Um, look at this picture. Does this picture look familiar? Look at that. That's his uh, background. That's funny. Um, that, that was not planned. Um, okay, so... It just looks like a media company with Jeff tapping his connections at Microsoft, Vice, MTV, Fox. Um, who are our people? Jeff Yap, his wife, um, senior management. This is a lot of people, contracted specialists, Um, Jeffrey App Photography, that's new to me. Um, 
Websites inactive, okay. So, I mean, I, I think this is more of a passion project, but I'm not sure. I don't want to speculate. Um, it has, I think that's Jeff's phone number, maybe. Um, so, Jeff, I think he's either currently a executive there or I don't know if he's still CEO. And I apologize, my uh, screen is not centered. Let's center it right there. Okay. Um, so we're back on LinkedIn and it is not centered again. So let's fix that. Okay. So going on down to his experience, founder and CEO at What's Next. Great. He is still there apparently. Um, next is founder and chairman, global e-commerce, multi-channel multi marketing and retail entertainment technology, NXTM. Um, before that was at Viacom, EVP, MTV Networks, News Media, a um, bunch of keywords. So Jeff was there for five years. And before that, he was the president at President Retail Group, Revenue, Revenue and Profit Growth, um, directed Retail Vision Divisions. Um, so this goes back all the way to 1994. Um president worldwide home entertainment global marketing so he was it looks like 20th century fox for six years as well um before that was vp of marketing at pizza hut at pepsico um and before that he was the vice president at international division uh e and j gallo winery for five years and it looks like his very first professional entry on linkedin is a uh, product group manager the beverage division at Kraft Foods Group. So a lot of name brand companies, companies we have all heard of. Um, so Jeff Yap, the person who has been a part of all of these wonderful experiences, is currently running uh, Chalice Brands, the uh, cannabis company, the small cannabis company in Oregon. Um, let's now read a little bit more into Jeff as himself. So we're going to look into an article on, uh, this is Medium. And the name of this article is, I'm going to move my head. So let me just see if I'm formatted right. Yeah, I'm just going to move my head just a smidge. Well, I can be right over here. So uh, Jeff Yap of Golden Leaf Holdings, five things I wish someone told me before I began leading my company. All right, so just a heads up, this is gonna give us a really good picture of Jeff's personality, how he kind of grew up, his mentality, um, a little bit more background about his personal life, um, and just kind of build a character of who this person is leading this company in Oregon. Um, So Jeff Yap, you guys can see my screen. Jeff Yap, CEO of Golden Leaf Holdings, has amassed an impressive body of experience through decades of leading strategies for global corporations, including Microsoft, Viacom, and Fox. His multifaceted expertise across a variety of industries is unmatched, bringing thoughtful and comprehensive leadership to Golden Leaf Holdings. Chalice Farms, one of the top cannabis companies in the Northwest with cultivation, production, and retail operations in Oregon. In 2004, he joined Viacom, where as executive vice president of MTV Networks, he led MTV, VH1, CMT, and Logo brands into new business and platforms that produced more than $200 million in revenue. In four years, he grew the division from $15 million to over $1.4 billion. Uh, in 2009, in addition to his corporate positions, Yap founded NXTM Entertainment Group, and in 2013, What's Next, a multi-channel marketing and consulting firm. Yap graduated from University of Michigan with a bachelor's degree in business administration and graduated with honors from Kellogg School of Management of Northwestern University, where he held a master's degree in management. During his time with MTV, VH1, and CMT, he received two Emmy nominations as a, an executive producer for the film Dale, the authorized true story of NASCAR legend Dale Earnhardt. The film was the highest rated movie in CMT's history. Yap's most significant source of pride is his wife, Tamara, and their seven children, Marlo, Christine, Molly, Ryan, Kelly, CJ, Nolan, as well as his grandson, Nash. Disclaimer, I'm not his son. <laughs> My name is Ryan, but I'm not his son. Um, 
so yeah, this is uh this kind of summarizes professional career and his family. So I do want to just point out having seven children um, definitely instills patience. I don't have any, but whenever I hear a crying kid in the public, I'm just like, man, I feel for those parents. Um, so to kind of build Jeff's character, well, let's continue on with this article. Um, okay, so the interviewer asks, can you tell us a story about the hard times that you faced when you first started your journey with your current company? The journey has been incredibly challenging from the start. I officially joined the cannabis industry in late 2019. Shortly thereafter, Oregon was hit by several unforeseen challenges, a strict vape ban, the great lockdown, a social justice movement, and devastating wildfires. First, the vape ban hit business hard, but the bound, but once the ban lifted, we quickly found our stride. Next, we had the great lockdown. We pivoted immediately to remote operations and did everything we could to be deemed quote, essential, quote, and keep our stores open. We moved quickly to make customers and staff feel safe and ensure appropriate safety measures. Instead of pulling back, we invested in our business even further because we saw the potential of cannabis and the opportunity to reach new consumers. As we were adjusting to our new great lockdown protocols, we saw a social justice movement rock our nation, which brought in violence, more than 100 nights of protests and tourism and travel decreased dramatically. Shortly afterwards, Oregon's wildfires hit the state and resulted in record-breaking damage, hugely impacting cannabis cultivation farms and production facilities. Despite all of that, we have grown our employee base up to 170 plus and have set record-breaking sales quarters, which is a reflection of both the team and have built, as well as the customers and products that we offer our community. So, um, I just wanted to highlight here, just if we're looking at Jeff Yap and how he talks about how he answers this question. Can you tell us a story about the hard times that you faced when you first started your journey? So Jeff Yap goes into detail specifically on the hard times. He discusses growth uh, for his company. He discusses the safety and well-being of his uh, employees. Um you know, also keeping in mind that the never stop moving, keep go, keep going forward. So that's what I picked up from this. Um, let's go on to the next portion. Did you ever consider giving up? Where did you get the drive to continue even though things were so hard? Giving up has never been an option. All current shareholders, I'm a current shareholder. I've been here since 2018. Giving up has never been an option giving up has never been an option. So I am a shareholder. I'm obviously biased. However, I'm trying to look at this from a balanced perspective. He says giving up has never been an option. I agree. Um, I think that's wonderful. Um, let's keep going on. The drive to continue and succeed comes from our team. We've transitioned from focusing on finances and numbers to focusing on the community that depends on us. If there is ever a question about our why, we go into our retail stores and look at our customers. They are a living manifestation of cannabis making a difference in their lives. I absolutely agree. I believe if you run a um, healthy business, you put the customers first, you care about your employees, you make sure everything's presentable, people wanna buy your products, you have great products, services, etc. The stock price finances will follow. Um, so I like this, uh, going on down. Um, so how are things going today? How did your grit and resilience lead to your eventual success? I don't think that aged well, um, success. Do we call it success right now? Well, you know what? We cannot not call it success. We are currently pending financial, uh, records for, from Chalice Brands. So considering that the CEO has not been able to produce um, audited results of this company, I don't know if I would call his current um, tenure a success at this point. Um, you know, we went into a great melt up of everything. Assets went up, marijuana was hot, 2021. And then now we've been hit, we're starting to feel the effect of inflation, et cetera. Chalice Brands has not released any financial documents um, since 2021, I believe. 
So I think Jeff will agree with me if Jeff, you're watching this. Um, I don't think by you, you chalice not being able to produce financial audited documents. I don't think that is considered a successful company. Brokerages are no longer allowing the stock to sell on markets because of this. So people are only allowed to sell, which is bringing the stock price to one penny. So, um, yeah, but to not to beg on that too much. I do know um, Chalice is kicking butt right now. Um, they just recently opened up a new location. They haven't stopped their vision. They're still executing. It's not like they just closed up shop and everyone went home. You know, um, Jeff Yap is no Trevor Milton. Just putting it out there. So um, things are still going on in the background. Um, we are just currently waiting. So yeah, this, this question didn't age, but let's see what Jeff Yap has to say. We couldn't be happier with how things are going now. We've turned a corner and are incredibly pleased with our company's overall performance. We're happy that our investors have renewed confidence in us and that we're able to continue educating our community about our products, all the while attracting new customers. It's taken a different perspective than I anticipated to work in this industry as we have to, as we work to balance the art of cultivation along with the science of the plant. We have great respect for the business discipline needed to succeed in financial leadership as a balance with the creativity needed in art of cultivation. You know, like I said, um, is the company successful behind doors? Yes, because they're still operating and they've opened a new location. I think having William Simpson's being brought back on the board is also bullish, um, optimistic. Um, but I mean, as a shareholder, we can't say that they're being successful because they haven't produced financial audited documents to their credit. They've tried, they, you know, we, we've seen the press releases, so they've tried. We don't know what they're doing now. Um, let's, uh, let's move on to the next question. Um, what do you, yes. What do you think makes your company stand out? Can you share a story? Our company stands out because of the customer experience. I absolutely agree. So I love Chalice Chalice Brands uh, products. They are unmatched. I currently live in Las Vegas, Nevada. Jeff, if you're listening to this, get some product down in Las Vegas. We need, there is a huge need in the Summerlin area for quality edibles. Yeah. Um, the edibles they have here are candies or um, liquids and it's not the same. Um, the taste, the overall high, it's, I don't use them. I just buy them for other people, but the quality is not the same. So Jeff Chalice, get some, get some, get a Summerlin, uh, resource out here, open a store. Um, so the, yeah, the, the experience of the taste in the stores is amazing. I once thought they would be the Starbucks of uh, marijuana dispensaries. Maybe they still can be. Um, we'll see. Uh, continuing with the article, sorry. Uh, we believe that our opportunity to succeed and grow is not only with current consumers, but with new consumers and to the space. Cannabis can really help with things in our life in a holistic way, such as energy levels, sleep needs, stress, anxiety, etc. Yet most of the population doesn't have a relationship with these products. Some have been using cannabis products for years and some are new to this industry. At the end of the day, when a customer walks in the door, our staff is here to connect aid and help them find what product they're looking for. That direct connection is what sets our company apart from most retail experiences. Going on down, you guys can see my screen still. Can you share a story about the funniest mistake you made when you were first starting? Can you tell us lessons or takeaways you learned from that? One of the first mistakes I made when I started in the industry was assuming the business was straightforward and that my business experience would directly translate into cannabis. I didn't have an understanding of the complexity of the agricultural piece of this business and the art that goes into running a great facility. We weren't where we initially needed to be. And after recognizing that and putting more of an investment into our cultivation facility and staff, it's night and day difference. Agree. Often our often leaders are asked to share the best advice they receive, but let's reverse the question. Can you share a story about advice you received that you now wish you never followed? Advice I received that I didn't put much energy to was needing to position your company in the best way to drive up share prices. 
I'm glad I didn't follow this advice directly because I've watched companies fail with this mindset. If you run your business well, the rest will follow. Agree. We're divided. We've divided the responsibilities within our company to, to divide managing the business and managing our investors, which has incredible value. Agree. Okay. Um, and now I'm just going to skip these because they talk about Jeff's career, which is good because it gives gives us character, but let's 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 stay on the cannabis side. Okay, uh, which tips would you recommend to your colleagues and in your industry to help them thrive and not burn out? One of the things that helps the cannabis space is the community that it has created. What I love about this more than any other industry is the combination of art and science and the cultivation and production operations. If you can continue to stay focused on the art, what it takes to grow high quality flower and the folks that do this as an art, it's renewing. If you're focused on the business aspect singularly, you'll inevitably burn out quickly. Regulatory environments, compliance requirements, weather relating to harvests, you can't control any of that. Having a healthy respect for the art of what your business is producing is critical, not only to your company's success, but for your own mentality to thrive. Agreed. Um, why are most com- What are the co- most common mistakes you have seen CEOs and founders make when they start a business? Um, not respecting cash flow, cash is king, and you need to spend every dollar like it's your last. There is no such thing as free lunch. The minute you take money from someone, the dynamic changes. You must show respect and discipline with your finances. I'm glad he is the CEO of Chalice Brands because I agree. Um, and I think this, this shows Jeff's character as well. Spending too much time on investability. Don't chase transactions to chase your share price. Focus on your company's value proposition to, to your customers. If you try to chase your share price, you'll make mistakes on key fundamentals of your business. Earn the trust and respect from investors from the quality and consistency of your products. Okay, in your experience, uh, what aspects, which aspects of running a company tends to be most underestimated? Can you explain or give an example? The aspect of running a company that I find to be the most underestimated is the people behind the business and the team dynamics. How well does your team work together? How quickly can they accomplish all required tasks? Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, these are more so... Okay, here they're cannabis related a little bit. Um, okay, it's the last little bit. Um, okay, so let's just read this last one and then we'll move on. Um, you're a person of great influence. If you could start a movement that would bring the most amount of good to the most amount of people, what would that be? You never know what your idea can trigger. Jeff says, I think the cannabis movement will bring, I think the cannabis movement will bring the most amount of good to the most amount of people. The industry is focused positively impacting its communities. And I think that it can be directed to help the homeless population nationally. I look at challenges around the world facing homelessness, both chronic and borderline. And I think that our industry can go a long way in helping create positive lasting change. Awesome. Okay. So this kind of gave us some character about Jeff. Um, let's just look at a little bit more character of Jeff. So I'm on LinkedIn and Jane Sullivan, who is the chief people officer at uh, Chalice Brands, just reposted or she liked a, an article with Jeff Yap. Um, I'll link all of these links in the description of this video, but basically here is an article on Jeff Yap where it, he goes into more character, but he talks more so about, um, his other companies or his other experience working at like Viacom, Fox, MTV, etc. Um, also I want to share this picture because he has a number 13 on his head, which is my favorite number. Okay. So, uh, going back to this, I wanted to highlight this because, um, Jane Sullivan liked this and let's just look at the comments. I've got a filter to show most recent. You guys can see this. This is all public, so I'm not going to blur anything out. Um, cause anybody can find this. Um, so Bill Scholl says, congrats, Jeff. Hope the family is great. I've always valued my time with you. Jeff Yap responds, Bill, great to hear from you. I hope all is well in my front. Two grandchildren and three weddings in the next year. Love to catch up. Uh, next one, Jeff, congrats, Jeff. No surprise at all. I learned so much working side by side with you. I will always be grateful for that opportunity. Miss you. 
You are completely missed. Hope you are enjoying yourself. The next comment. Congratulations, Jeff. That description is spot on. Thank you, Holly. That means a lot. And again, you guys, if you want to read the article, I'll link it. Um, more congrats, more congrats, more responses from Jeff again. I think this, this highlights that Jeff, um, I think he's a good guy. I think he is not a shady guy. I think he cares about people. I think he cares about being, um, being accountable. Um, you know, Jeff Yap, the executives of Charles Brands, at one point were not taking a um, compensation for um, their operation, for their uh, productivity, whatever, their uh, working experience at Chalice Brands. Um, and also, I do want to note that Jeff Yap has his own freaking scholarship, which is awesome. I think this is another uh, great thing Jeff is doing. He's giving away a $1,000 scholarship to three people with the deadline of 325-2023. Y'all, that was uh, today. I'm filming this on the 27th. That was two days ago. So this is still relevant. Jeff is still a good guy based off of this. Um, I mean, I don't know what else to say. I think Jeff is a good guy. Um, he's purchased shares of Chalice Brands stock. Um, he's still committed to Chalice Brands. I got to show you this new video I found with Jeff and Bill or William Simpson. Um, and the new website. It's coming together, but let's slowly get there. Um, so now we've talked about Jeff Yap. I think we've got a good character. I really, as a person, as a CEO, you know, he's no Trevor Milton. He's not shady. He is very much in the public open. He's got seven kids. And I only say that because I'm, you have to understand the amount of discipline and patience that goes along with that. He is well decorated. His career is amazing. I feel like Chalice Brands is in good hands. Um, but now let's, let's, uh, again, go behind the curtain. I was able to find, um, documentation on Chalice Brands. Um, if you've made it this far in the video, please consider subscribing, and hitting the like button. But if you have seen any publications from Chalice Brands, Chalice Farms, Golden Leaf Holdings that you would like me to dig up, let me know because I was able to dig up the one investor presentation among many. Um, and I was able to crawl the website, uh, the site map and look at basically every type of web page that exists under the chalicebrandslimited.com domain. Um, so again, let's now turn over to, uh, the crawl walk run. Let's look at their, one of their last corporate presentations. All right, you guys, like I said, I was able to dig this up from the depths of the internet. If you have, um, any other, um, artifacts you would like me to look into to see if I can get um, by scraping the internet. Let me know and I can uh, look for you. Um, so again, this was their June 2021 presentation. Um, I think one of their last investor presentations that um, included a lot of juicy information. Um, so let's just go down. Uh, company overview, overview da, 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 all of their brands. I don't know if they have Fifth and Root still. I know it looks like Ginger Malio, who was in charge of Fifth and Root. I don't know if she's with the company anymore. Um, going on down, here's their products. Very cool. The marketing pictures look wonderful. Um, all right. Um, you know, all of this, I can put this in the description below as well. So you guys can view it. So look at this, where we come from 40, uh, my head's in the way, but whatever, 40 years of combined cannabis experience, 20 years of combined cannabis supply chain experience, 40 years of fortune 25 experience and 25 years of combined retail experience. So all their, uh, experiences are on the right. All right, let's play a game of who's still there. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Um, but here is the latest, uh, well, one of the last pictures of their executive management. Um, uh, right now, I believe Jeff Yap is still there. I believe Megan Miller is still there. I believe Jane Sullivan is still there. Um, 
for the rest, I don't know. I know Andrew Marchington, the CFO, is not there. And I know John Varkey is not there as well because he left recently. Um, board, oh no, I'm sorry. He might still be there, but I don't know if he's on the board of directors anymore. Um, Bob McKnight is no longer on the board of directors either. He left in early January. Um, I don't recall some of the other people, but you guys can check. This is what I was looking for on the internet, and I find I was so irritated that I was I had to dig deeper. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna find this. So um, I'll take my glasses off because that weird glare. So crawl, walk, run. So example investment two hundred fifty thousand. Example margin five to fifteen percent. Example investment one million. Example margin twenty thirty percent. Example investment five million thirty to sixty percent. Um. So again, I don't know if they removed this because they didn't want to get in trouble or if because things have changed, which they have, obviously. So um, they have these stages of crawl, walk, run, and growth opportunities. So I don't know if you guys can see the picture here, but Oregon is green, which is run. California is walk. Nevada is crawl. Let me just tell you, Nevada is nothing right now because I'm here and I want product and it's not here. Um, and then the growth opportunities is basically the middle left of the U.S. Um, now, I think we all should have known to not be, to not fall for this because it's not as simple as crawling, walking, and running. So this is like, if they, if this was success, they have it going like straight up, up and to the right. A uh, real success is like this. So I think we all believed it was going to go up, but uh, nope. We had the great lockdown and we're seeing inflation. They can't get their audited results out. Um, so yeah, we we were, we got, we, we fell, we fell for this a little bit. I fell for this a little bit. Um, so going on down. We're just, I'm just um, admiring this as we're going down. Um, okay, here are their objectives for 2021, 2022. Add scalable next generation e-commerce platform. Did they do that? Mm -hmm. Yes, maybe. I know they have an app. Oh, you know what? I think I have the app. Um, you know what? I don't think I have the app. Do I have the app? Shopping. Chalice, I do have the app. All right, I'm going to plug in and I'm going to show you guys the app. Let's let's look at the scalable next generation e-discovery platform. Um, if this is what they meant by that. Um, full year EBITDA positive and 5% market share. I don't know if they hit that. Um, and then all of 2022 run phase launch California stores. I don't think they're in. I don't think they're running in California. Um, Okay, so they purchased Homegrown, good for them. Going over their highlights, oh gosh. Okay, so I know there is a um, presentation discussing the Superstore, which they never opened, unfortunately, but ca you know, cash is tight. They, I think they made the right call. Um, so yeah, they didn't open that. And I think they currently have like 16 stores. Um, yeah, well, well, they, they'll, well, I have more things open that we'll discuss the stores. So really quickly, let me hook up to uh, show you guys the, um, the app. Let's look at the app. I have not spent much time in the app, but I want to see it. We can look at it together. Maybe they've uh, revamped it, you know, like they did with their uh, website, which I'm going to show you here soon. Um, all right. I'm just waiting for my phone to plug in. There we go. All right. All 
All right, here you guys can see my phone. Chalice. Um, to continue using your wallet. So I just reviewed the app and I went through all the hoops to try and use it. And basically the app won't let me search for stores because I'm not, my location is not near a licensed uh, chalice store, but the app was very updated. There was the biometrics and everything. Um, so great, great for them. Um, let's move on to, uh, this article as well here, um, Chalice Drops Truth Bomb. Um, in a fairly depressing letter to shareholders, can you guys can see my screen? Um, Oregon-based Chalice brand dropped a truth bomb on the industry woes. Um, so going on down, the good news, the letter points out the success of the Oregon State Cannabis Market based on data from the Oregon OLCC. Cannabis sales in Oregon rose from 795 million in 2019 to 1.1 billion in 2020 and a peak of 1.18 billion in 2021, nearly an increase of 50% in two years. However, after delivering the good news, it was time to get real and stuff got real. The bad news, uh, the letter hit the macroeconomic trends of inflation, higher interest rates, the skyrocketing cost of housing and the effect of consumers spending less. Digging further, the letter says Oregon's cannabis operators have been beset with repetitive theft, increased overhead, and excessive competitors. Uh, moving down to Chalice's ch Chalice Challenge. Despite all the negatives, Chalice told its investors it was staying the course. The company owns 16 dispensaries and operates two retail locations in Oregon. Um, I believe it is now 17 locations as of this article. However, the company also said that the capital has dried up in the industry. The company wrote, the insufficient capital markets have continued to challenge our working capital. We will maintain our pursuit of constant margin improvements despite the lack of access to capital in order to remain competitive in the marketplace. Chalice also said it's trying to improve margins through product mix and the way it is buying products through both first and third party margins. Revenue growth. The company has also changed its auditors, causing a delay in its filing in filing its financial statements. Despite not having audited results, Chalice reported that its dispensary revenue for the first quarter of 2022 was 5.3 million, representing a 45.1 increase compared to the same period of the prior year. The increase was the result of the homegrown acquisition on May 21, May 19, 2021. Dispensary revenue for the second quarter of 2022 was 5.2 million, representing a 1.4% increase compared to the same period and the prior year. Similar to the first quarter com comparison, the dispensary revenue increase was largely attributable to the homegrown acquisition. Dispensary revenue for the first six months of 2022 was 10.5 million, representing a 19.5 increase compared to the same period the prior year. Breathe. Pay cuts. The moves include cutting gross wages and salaries by 30%. The letter said that the board members and the CEO, Jeff Yap, are all operating with no compensation and will continue to do so for this foreseeable future. Again, this goes to show how um, Jeff is a great guy, I believe. Great CEO. Um, but I'm also delusional because the trading has been suspended on the Canadian exchange, stock market exchange, for over a year now. And nobody can buy the stock anymore in the U.S. You can only sell um, unless you have a different type of broker where you can buy. I wish I could buy it a penny. Um, this other thing I want to show you guys is Chalice Farms has Chalice TV on Vimeo. And they keep it updated. Here is uh, their latest video series um, from March 2023, which is currently. Um... So yeah, they, they're staying up to date on their app. They're staying up to date on their Chalice TV. Um, and they're staying up to date on their website. Um, so I want to show you those three things. Um, and here's the older article with the new golden leaf, how the Chalice Farms founder is turning the company around. So this is William Simpson. He is now back on the board. I find this as bullish. I feel like he bought the company bought a bunch of people on to turn it around he stepped away 
and now he's back. So um, that's the too long of too long didn't read on why I'm optimistic about the company. Um, he talks, they talk about getting a couple people on uh, the board, their new product. Um, the two people they had on add the they the two people they had joined the bar, board in 2018 are both gone. The latest to leave was Bob McKnight on in 2023, January 2023. Um, so yeah, here is uh, Michael Crook leaving a couple months after joining the board, and um, here is the announcement to appoint Gary Zipfel to the board of directors immediately. And also, I believe this is Bob McKnight um, leaving the board as well. Yeah, Bob. Bob. Um, so that's kind of Chalice in a nutshell of where we are today. Again, I crawled the website for Chalice Brands Limited. I There's over, gosh. Where is it? Over 188 pages crawled on the website. Um, there's 14 broken links, which have data that I wanted to see, but you couldn't see, so you'd look at other places. So um, I have this website crawled, so now when I go back, I can see um, the latest updates, which is good. Um, and now I want to show you guys the new website. So this is what I believe or why I believe um, Chalice is going to be back. And I'm hoping when Jeff Yap gets the audited information that um, he buys more stock, honestly. Because I want to buy more stock. And I'm not going to buy more stock unless I have conviction. And if Jeff Yap buys, I'm buying. So what am I talking about? Well, look at this new website. Uh, just looks brand new, totally different redesign. Um, oh, it just literally lists out all of their dispensaries. I was hoping it was gonna, just going to show like a map. Um, oh, like did they buy oh, private stash? Um, okay. Okay, let's just go back to the investor portion. Oh, here's all their, okay, here's the websites on a map. You guys can see. How awesome. Okay, um, let's just go back to the investors so I can show you guys um, the cool updates. Um, also, Chalice Brands web designer, if you're watching this, you still have 2022 listed on the bottom of your website. There is code that you can have it automatically update um, by the year. So just a heads up there. Um, here is a new video four months ago. Does this have sound? Oh, here's the video with sound. Why didn't I just come here? Just a function to fight for, place of football, just to get fit the next day. One of my good friends like, you know, you're going to end up dead. You should try something like cannabis. Maybe these cookies, and I'd eat a quarter one from it to bed at night. And it's like three weeks, I would eat myself out of everything far I was taking. Cannabis saved my life. I mean, I think I have a life because of it. Truly. What I love about Williams is started with fun. The way he started, the reason he started, was his belief in fun-based medicine and its ability to improve people's lives. From the very beginning, William has been a huge advocate for small farmers in this industry. We talk about turning to the farm. I don't think we have the best. If you think about the way Chalice has been, it is about growth. It is about people, ideas, and innovation. And it really starts at the farm. And he had a vision of how far it could push the path. We, the Chalice, live every day on our simple thought. How do we continue to push the path? What's exciting for me about Ball Peak is it's the realization of that vision that we started 10 years ago. Cannabis is community for us. 
thing we talk about today, we can we share, we come together. And that, in fact, is what makes cannabis and the industry so strong. The better we all are, the better the industry is going to be. This is not about fighting over customers. It's about bringing new customers in. And our focus has got to be about growing the market. Because the more people discover the benefits of cannabis, the better the choice is going to be. You know, go out there and buy your jobs. So what's your passion? Find out what we do. We started because it was something that enhanced our life, while also being something that can actually make society a better place. Cannabis truly enhances all lives. That is the mission of Chalice. This is still the mission of Chalice. It hasn't changed. In fact, it's stronger today than it's ever All right. You guys saw it here first, right? So, um, okay. Um, so another reason why I believe uh, Chalice is going to come back is because not only their website, this newer video, um, but also this, all of this information down here. Um, Chalice, uh, web designer, if you're watching this, you have some dummy data put in here. It's just copy and pasted. Add your pricing strategy. Be sure to include important details like value, length of service, and why it's unique. You have that pasted three times, so just a heads up, that's on your public uh, website. Um, also, additionally, you have this chart with no context. I have no idea what this means. I'm hoping you guys will add the data to that later. And here's the 2022, that should be 2023. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping Chalice comes back stronger than ever. I think Jeff Yap is a great leader. I'm hoping he can do something because I own almost a quarter million shares and it's all down 99.99%. Um, so with that, what do you think? Do you think Chalice is gonna make a comeback? If you've made this far, please consider subscribing to my video. Hit the like button. Talk to you later.